Okay, there we go. So hello and welcome everybody um, to this uh, short but hopefully informative presentation about scalp wellness, which I think is something which concerns a lot of people. And so I thought was um, rather appropriate as we're just, um, my brand Salvex has just launched its new dry scalp shampoo. <clears throat> so I thought a, a little um, presentation about scalp wellness would be appropriate. So let's just make a start. Let's just dive in there. So here's the first question. What does scalp health really mean? You know, it's the, it's the cornerstone of not just the beauty of hair, but also uh, our overall skin or dermatological well-being. And it's a barometer for various health conditions. It tells us about our stress and also hormonal imbalances. So let's let's look a little bit deeper. Here's an interesting word: the scalp's microbiome, which is the it's it, our scalp is home to a complex ecosystem of microorganisms, which protect and nourish our scalp and health. It's like the it's like the the uh, organisms in our bowel, again, the same kind of thing. They are actually, our, they are, when it's in balance, they are our friendly bacteria, which help us and help our digestion. But when it's out of balance, it causes problems. Disruption in this balance can lead to common issues like dryness and dandruff. So let's have a look at the microbiome biome in a little bit more detail. Let's move all this aside so I can read read the there we go so <clears throat> the microbiome refers to the community of microorganisms on the skin surface including the scalp so what are the effects of antibiotics so antibiotics are the sort of main problem to the microbiome both on in our gut and on our skin as well overuse of antibiotics disrupts the balance leading to a decrease in beneficial bacteria and potential overgrowth of harmful pathogens um there's a risk of fungal infection so it affects the balance of fungal communities and can cause issues like dandruff or seborrheic dermatitis um there are uh, it contributes to antibiotic resistant bacterial strains on the scalp which can be challenging to treat we know about the effect of mrsa which is the systemic, the bacteria which uh, can invade our bodies and cause all kinds of problems. And it's very hard to treat them with other antibiotics because of overuse. Skin sensitivity and irritation, of course, uh, it can lead to uh, skin sensitivity and irritation due to lack of protective bacteria. It affects the oil uh, production, the sebum production causing oily or dry scalp conditions. It affects the immune response of the, the scalp and generally affects the hair's health, leading to dandruff, hair loss, or, you know, just makes it look, can make hair look just not very healthy. Let's have a look at this. <clears throat> <clears throat> so, um, what are the causes of dry scalp and dandruff? Well, we've said a little bit about this already. So dry scalp comes from a lack of natural oils and can cause it's a flaking of skin. Dandruff is often due, uh, it's not just about a dryness, it's about um, it's a fung it can be a fungal infection, um, excess oil and a, this yeast-like fungus. And both can be affected by weather and changes uh like stress and the product buildup. Let's go on. So uh, let's have a look at sensitive scalp conditions. Eczema, psoriasis, seborrheic dermatitis, not, as it says, it's not just cosmetic. They are systemic, often linked to immune responses. And they require not just uh, skin care, but a holistic approach for a sort of deep uh, healing. Let's have a look at the ingredients in, so a lot of shampoos contain quite harsh chemicals that strip the scalp's natural oils. The things I'm th thinking of are things like sodium lauryl sulfate, sodium laureth sulfate. Sodium laureth sulfate is actually a slightly gentler 
uh, cleanser than sodium laurel sulfate, but it's still synthetic and a little bit harsh. And then there's ammonium laurel sulfate and ammonium laureth sulfate, which are sort of very similar, similar ingredients. They're sort of chemicals that um, are quite harsh. They're actually used, for example, to degrease engines, if that gives you a, a clue as to sort of how harsh they are. So, um, you know, we in Salvex, we don't obviously don't use such ingredients. We use only plant origin ingredients. Let's have a look at what we do use in the in the, the new dry scalp shampoo. So cocomida pro propyl betaine is derived from coconut oil. It's a, quite a mild cleansing agent. Sorbitan sesquicaprylate is also from, when you say capril, it means it's coconut based. So it's uh, it helps emulsify and stabilize the, the shampoo. Sodium lor lor oil, just let somebody in. Um, Sodium lauryl sarcosinate is a surfactant. Surfactant just means a cleanser. It's what actually sort of uh, makes grease, turns grease into a sort of emulsion so you can wash it out easily. So it aids in cleansing. Glyceryl laurate. Um, again, this is, uh, if you can mute yourself. Um, so oh, you sorry. Yeah. No, it's not great. Um, so glycerol laurate is also from uh, glycerin and uh, uh, coconut. It's a conditioning agent, adds moisture to the scalp. Now, let's look at these nice uh, herbal extracts. So we've got salix albus, willow bark extract. Um, it it's actually can be used, it's actually a sort of uh, antifungal. It can be used for dandruff, for example. It has a sort of exfoliating effect as well, but it's very gentle. We only put a very small amount of that in. Panthenol is lovely. It's a vitamin B5 that is very good for all kinds of skin. We put it in our skin creams as well. It's very, very uh, good for stressed out skin, stressed out scalps. And uh, um, generally it's quite healing. It's quite good actually for healing cuts as well and grazes and where the skin is broken. Uh, of course, lavender, everyone knows lavender. It's very soothing, um, very, very gentle. Some people are a little bit sensitive to lavender. In the Salvex products though, because of, we have put uh, quite a lot of different ingredients and only a small amount of each, then it means that if anyone is sensitive to one particular ingredient, all the other ingredients calm it down. And um, we get very, very few um, sensitive reactions so we very very few uh, at all if, if at all we just you know once once in a while somebody is we've got is very sensitive but apart from that we don't get we get very very little problem um now people sometimes get bothered about the alcohol we have to list the alcohol um because that's the law but in fact we don't add alcohol the alcohol is just present as part of the herbal extract so it's in very, very small amounts and doesn't really, you know, it won't dry out the skin. It's too in too small amounts. Um, and I say we don't actually add that. It's just we have they have to use it to make a herbal extract. Um, Leptospermum and Petersonia is a nice long name, actually translates into lemon tea tree oil. And for those of you that know tea tree oil, lemon tea tree, I think is you see, I'm a, I think some people like tea tree oil. It's you know, some people don't like it. Um, I, I'm, you know, it can be it's quite brace, a bracing aro aroma, uh, tea tree, but I actually prefer lemon tea tree, which is along the lines of lemongrass, for example. It's a much more, I feel it's a much more friendly aroma, sort of citrus, citrusy aroma. Um, and it's very antimicrobial, so it's very antifungal, very antibacterial as well. So it's great for the scalp. Aloe barbadensis, which actually is aloe vera. Um, so it's the same. It's it's actually the uh, aloe barbadensis is actually the Latin name for aloe vera. Um, so obviously very well known. It's hydrating. It's very very soothing and calming. Um, citrus nobilis is mandarin, and that's an essential oil. That's for the for its scent. It does have a sort of calming effect on the skin. It's very very benign. It doesn't uh, disturb. Some essential oils can be quite pokey on the skin, but mandarin is not one of them. It's very, very gentle. Arctium lapper is a lovely burdock root extract. If you know burdock from the little burrs you get that stick to your jumpers, and it's really good. It's a very, very it's an interesting homeopathic remedy, uh, which is used for um, uh, some kind of skin conditions and tonsillitis and uh, immune problems, um, but it helps condition and nourish the scalp. 
wheat protein is great for the hair particularly so we want to look after the scalp and the hair in this formula tababura is a very interesting nice it's poor darko uh, you may have heard of it it's um also it says anti-inflammatory but it's also antifungal so again good for dandruff uh urea is um is is an additive that um but it's a moisturizer it's uh, it is um it is a natural i'm not sure where it comes from though uh, but it is a natural ingredient and it moisturizes the scalp particularly Anthemis nobilis, Roman chamomile, beautiful, soothes and calm, calming, and it adds to the aroma. This very nice and gentle, soothing aroma. Geranium flower, uh, geranium oil is also very, very nice for the um, for the uh, aroma, particularly. Um, and it, it sort of adds. I always think it it geranium smells a little bit like rose. Um, rose is very, very expensive. If we put rose in, then we would be price ourselves out of the market. But geranium is a, is is a little bit modestly more modestly priced, but it is a beautiful aroma. It's a very smooth, gentle, um, kind of sweet, very sweet aroma. Um, then you've got petit grain. Petit grain is a really interesting essential oil. It's actually produced from the wood of the uh, lemon tree. Or the um, no, sorry, the orange, uh, orange tree. Sorry, the orange tree is produced from the bark, so it's not the flower. Neroli, which you may have heard of, is the from the flower of the orange tree. And petit grain and neroli is very, very expensive. Again, I think it's even more expensive than rose now. So it would be uh, we used to use it actually, but it just became so expensive it was just crazy, and we you know it just wouldn't have made any sense. But petit grain actually smells very very similar and I actually I in a way even prefer it to neroli neroli has a quite a yeah it's quite a very floral aroma very sweet floral aroma but petit grain has a kind of woody aspect so it's orangey and woody and it's kind of really really nice it's very very refreshing uh biotin is uh added ingredient we put in and pantoalactone as well we put these these are natural uh extracts and they um they also improve hair quality and scalp quality so those are the main ingredients in um in our dry scalp shampoo let's have a look so this is about scalp care let's see what we can do to help our scalp care um it's not just about the products we use it's a comprehensive approach and so diet is one thing that is very, very important. You may, you probably know this already, but uh, you need foods that contain vitamins, minerals, and especially omega-3 fatty acids. They're really nice. So from uh, oily fish, for example, and uh, also zinc and biotin and antioxidants. These are all, um, so fruit, fresh fruit, for example, um, Fish, oily fish are very good and sort of leafy green vegetables, all very good for skin and scalp health. Proper hydration, uh, drinking an adequate amount of water every day. They say sort of two liters a day, um, but you can take it in the form of tea, for example. It doesn't have to be just water or fruit juice, for example. Gentle hair care practices, um, so avoiding excessive heat styling, um, very tight hairstyles harsh there's a lot of very chemical rich products on the market i know that particularly women sort of you know to get good hair they will often do anything to you know the even more than skin care there's sort of a, an acceptance that you have to kind of use chemicals in hair care products but it's best if you can avoid um avoid that or at least make sure you're then using natural products to kind of to moisturize hair as well and the scalp um after you use these other products um yeah, we'll just say that check select hair for hair products that are free from harsh chemicals um regular scalp massages massaging the scalp increases blood circulation can help distribute natural oils promote scalp health so that's um that's nice to incorporate that if you go for a massage try and get your masseur or mass use to to also massage the scalp as well um avoid excessive sun exposure sun exposure is great so don't don't hide yourself away, but do protect your scalp from uh, harmful rays by wearing a hat or using a sunscreen. Um, <clears throat> let's have a look at this. So scalp conditions. 
Uh, dry scalp, what can we do? So uh, you obviously use the Salvex dry scalp shampoo, which you'll find very, very beneficial for your scalp and your hair uh, to replenish lost oils. Um, avoid hot, too hot water. Don't use scalding water, but more lukewarm showers to prevent further drying. And we've said that consider scalp mass massages with nourishing oils to improve circulation. Um, dandruff, again, dry salvex can help mild, mild dandruff, but you may need, if it's really severe dandruff, you may need to use an anti-dandruff shampoo, which contains, contains these kind of ingredients like selenium sulfide or pyrithione zinc. Um, and um, maintain good scalp hygiene and avoid excessive scratching. Manage stress, it can exacerbate dandruff. Um, gentle fragrance free products can help soothe irritated skin. Um, well, they can, they don't have to be fragrance free, they can have essential oils in them, which can be soothing. Um, Salvex Rescue Cream could be used at bedtime on patches of eczema. You could actually use the Salvex Rescue Cream on if you have sort of pronounced patches of eczema or psoriasis on your scalp. You could actually use that, it'll be very beneficial, it's very, very good. And then you wash it out in the morning with the dry scalp shampoo. Um, avoiding harsh weather conditions and allergens obviously let's move on um i think we've actually covered covered this actually a lot of this already balanced scalp. we talked about the balanced scalp microbiome for those of you that came in late um the microbiome is the community of microorganisms on on the scalp or the skin and it is necessary. You need those. Um, it's the same as in the, the gut. You need those bacteria to and and certain fungi to maintain uh, scalp health. Um, hydration. I think we've sort of gone there. I'm just repeating myself here, really. Um, stress and hormonal imbalances. Yeah, the, the this is quite interesting. Um, hormonal imbalances um, can have a profound effect on both scalp and hair. So around, you know, if there are problems with the menstrual cycle or sometimes during pregnancy or during menopause, um, sometimes this can affect both the scalp and also the changes in the growth patterns of hair as well. Um, so... These are more information about hormonal changes. So androgens, including testosterone, influence gro hair growth on the scalp. And imbalances in the androgens uh, can lead to conditions like alopecia. So um, there are certain shampoos that contain anti-androgen ingredients, which can help, um, which can help hair loss in fact my i had a brand before salvex called swell you if you have a pronounced hair loss if this is a real problem you might want to explore their uh, swell.co.uk you may want to explore their products as well um which focuses mainly on hair loss we're mainly focused on scalp uh, health and as well as cleansing but scalp health more than hair loss uh, pregnancy hormonal fluctuations uh, menopause, we've just said this before, um, decreased estrogen levels affects the scalp health, dryness, thinning, yeah. Thyroid hormone imbalances can also, very, very important, uh, thyroid is in, uh, in scalp and hair health, um, and particularly it can uh, yeah, cause uh, with either overactive or underactive thyroid, you can have hair loss, dryness and brittleness. And um, chronic stress is also something to be avoided if you can. Difficult sometimes in this world we live in. But um, yes, seeking a balance is in your stress levels can help you um, to, again, to keep a sort of healthy scalp and hair. So it is a, it's a holistic approach we need to take. It's not just about slapping on something on your skin, but taking a sort of holistic so, uh, approach. Make sure you're breathing, your, your hydration, that you uh, keep centered during the day, that you don't try not to get into difficult arguments and, um, uh, you know, sort of uh, screaming matches at home and that sort of thing with the kids. Not good for your scalp or hair health. And uh, hair loss, um, we can talk a little bit about this. What kinds of hair loss are there? So there's alopecia areata. That's an autoimmune condition, which causes hair loss in patches. Then there's androgenetic alopecia. That's a hereditary condition. And that normally is about more like gradual thinning. 
And then telogen effluvium um, is that's hair shedding that's sort of due to temporary conditions like stress, illness, or dietary changes. Um, so getting yourself treated homeopathically is a good way as well to maintain your body's general health, which then feeds through to the um, to scalps and hair. And okay, so this is just a little bit about how to use a shampoo properly. Um, some people, when they're using uh, a shampoo, they sort of they they get it wrong and they focus on washing the hair, but it's much better actually to focus on the scalp. So um, start by wetting your hair and scalp thoroughly with lukewarm water. You then apply a little bit of salvic shampoo into your palm and then gently massage it, massage it into your scalp, the wet scalp using your fingertips. So you're not really focusing on the hair itself, but the scalp. And when you wash the, the, uh, wash the suds out, they will automatically cleanse the hair, but you won't over dry the hair. And that's the main that's the main takeaway from this. So focus on scalp massage. And that's the main thing. And relax and enjoy not just lavender, but all the other scents as well. Uh, there's no need for harsh scrubbing. Keep it gentle. Rinse your hair and scalp thoroughly with lukewarm water. Um, and, you know, if you need to, I mean, that should be enough. The one thing to say about this, the Salvex shampoo is that it's not it doesn't have um synthetic ingredients that boost the foam we're not the foam doesn't really mean that foam is just a visual thing it doesn't mean that it's it's cleansing more than if it doesn't have the foam so it actually makes the salvage shampoo makes a kind of creamy more of a creamy uh emulsion uh but it does uh it does clean nevertheless you don't really need the foam to make it cleanse um so uh, in fact, sometimes that can just over the, the foaming agents can over dry your hair and scalp anyway. And just as a little gift for everybody that turned up today and also um, for I'll send this to everybody that couldn't make it today. Um, we're offering 50 percent discount on your first bottle of Salvex Dry Shampoo. Sorry, Salvex Dry Scalp Shampoo uh, using this code below Roots 50. Uh, if you just use that at our uh, salvexskin.com website you'll automatically be given 50% discount which is a big big discount and I hope you'll hope you'll then like it so much that you'll come back and keep keep buying it um, I think you will enjoy it um, with it's got a great spa aroma and you just know that you're being good to your scalp and your skin so I hope you'll take advantage of that and and that's about it is there are there any questions while while we're here Questions or comments, feel free to unmute yourself. Um, uh, hi. So, so hey. this uh, one of my daughter have eczema. So definitely, this one I would like to try, and I will try on her scarf. But I was thinking, it, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. But the other thing I was thinking, like my other daughter, she got like uh, you know greasy hair and oily hair. So will this be good for her as well? Because I know like her, they are oily skin, you know. She this, is, oily. This, is, this is both your do two dogs, is it, you're talking about? Yes, yes. Yeah. So for yeah. one, I know it's good, yeah. Yeah, if it's greasy, I mean, greasy, I mean, it will cleanse really, really well. Um, but it won't over dry. It won't over dry it. Um, okay. And it is, it'll be nourishing to the skin as well. So it'll be, I mean, a lucky dog, you know, is what I say um yeah got, it's got a nice mummy <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so no lucky lucky dog so yeah no absolutely it'd be very nice for, for all kinds of animals yeah okay all right but nice for humans too you should use it yourself <laughs> okay <laughs> thank you okay thank you anyone else okay all right good well thanks for joining me today and um I wish you very well with your scalp and your skin and uh, and yeah, hopefully you'll give it a try and I will send you a video of this. So you've got this as a reference and see you another time. Thanks very much. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye.